Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rackspill Software Podcast of June 26, 2012. I'm your host, Joe Ebisamra, and today I have a very special guest that I'm really excited about. Richard Hay is one of the select few Microsoft Most Valuable Professionals, or MVPs, in the world, which he has been since 2010. MVPs are awarded by various categories, and Rich has been an MVP for the Windows Operating System. And this year, his MVP distinction is classified as Windows Expert Consumer, which you, anybody who's followed Rich would, <laughs> could not argue with that. Rich has been hosting informative webs- websites since 1995 and currently hosts and is the owner of the very popular and informative WindowsObserver.com. He also hosts the Observe Tech Podcast, a weekly look at all things technology with a bent towards Microsoft and Windows. There's more. You can find him on Twitter at WinObs, that's W-I-N-O-B-S. Between his website, his Twitter account, and his podcast, Rich is like the CNN of all things Microsoft and Windows. I know if I've been out of the loop for a while or offline for whatever reason, Rich is the place I go to get, to get caught up on everything on, with Windows and Microsoft. So Rich, welcome and thank you very much for joining me today. Well, I appreciate that, Joe. Thanks for the introduction. Sure. And, and by the way, you live down in Florida, right, where you guys have been getting hammered by rain. Are you holding out okay? I Yeah, we're doing all right. I guess they uh, they were just reporting this morning uh, uh, upwards of 10 or 11 inches. They had seven inches fall in the last 24 hours out at the airport, which is north of Jacksonville. And uh, I know here in my area, we had some pretty significant and street flooding and stuff like that away from me. I'm not in a flood zone myself, but yeah, we, you know, we were asking for rain, um, and <laughs> we certainly have gotten our share of rain now. Uh, some places up in Georgia, they're saying 20 inches. I've heard that's, that. That's, that's yeah. amazing. Well, glad you're holding up. Um, one last thing. I know I have some Navy in my family, so I need to do a little shout out to the Navy. I know you're a Navy guy and retired last year after I believe almost 30 years of service. So I want to thank you for your service. And I with, did, yeah. Thanks, Joe. With the Navy, you were, I think you were involved with a lot of telecom and computers there, too, and technology. So that's what got you into this whole thing, which you haven't let up. And you also have a lot of uh, yeah, connections. I, I, um, I started my career out back in 1982 as what was called a radio man at the time. We, our primary job was data and voice communications. And that included, you know, all the gear that ran the circuits and gave us the connectivity on, on off the ship and shore stations. And over the course of my career, that, as you might imagine, just like technology has uh, developed in the early 90s, we saw more and more of our systems moving off the old, what we, the old mechanical teletypes we used, moving into computer-based systems where the feeds were plugged into an interface that fed it into the computer and allowed us to manipulate and use the data in a much more efficient way and distribute it much more efficiently because we used to stand at photocopiers and make hundreds and hundreds of copies in the course of a war to distribute the message traffic around the ship or around the command. And with the advent of computers, and just like they did in, you know, in enterprise and in, in homes, we saw more and more of our stuff head into those systems. And uh, our, in the mid-90s, they changed our rating from radium into information systems technician. Uh, the last eight years, I didn't work in the field because I, I changed into more of a management leadership role. But uh, it's still, I still work in commands and very very close to my heart. All this technology and stuff in it. You know, I, I'm an old geek from way back when Commodore 64. Built, I remember building my first Xena 248 computer, and <laughs> it, it's been amazing to watch technology over the years as how it has transformed from. You know, I, I just pulled out a box the other day. This is funny, an MS-DOS 5 box that's still shrink-wrapped with the software from 1991. And you know how much memory that software required then? 256K. <laughs> we, I don't know that, I don't know that, or I don't even know if there's a phone out there with that little memory in it. I don't think so. So technology is transforming, I, I don't think so either. And you know, being able to be on, to see technology as it's, as it's changing and where things have come, even over the last 10 years, uh, it's been quite amazing, quite amazing. really has. Yeah, it keeps coming faster and faster. You're actually also involved or have a high interest in NASA, I know, and if so if anybody is following you, they're going to get a lot of NASA information as well and some a lot of great photography, which you also do. That's, that's photography on this planet, I believe, not, not outer space photography, but you also share some of that from NASA too, right? Not, not off the planet yet. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. 
I do. I'm not off the planet yet, although if they ever offered, offered, we were talking about this, you know, the NASA stuff I'm involved in uh, started out as NASA tweet ups. Their social media branch started in fighting uh, Twitter followers and social media followers to come to Kennedy Space Center for shuttle launches, shuttle landings, and other events. And I've been lucky enough to go to four different events. And because they know the value of social media they know the value of getting fans to talk about what's going on and and it just adds up exponentially as as your follower or see it and spread it to theirs and it really is a great program if anybody's interested in it you can check out nasa.gov and they've got a uh, nasa social page that tells you about upcoming events and uh it, it is if you're a fan of it at all it is a unique uh, up close look at what they do and how important the the science and everything else is going because, you know, unfortunately, when the last shuttle landed last year, many people thought our space program was over. It, and it was in the sense of we're not launching any humans into the space right now. But uh, we certainly still have, you know, six guys, six people orbiting the planet on the International Space Station. Uh, and there's just tremendous opportunity for science. Mars Science Lab is about to land on Mars, the new rover that's going to land. And that's happening in August. So, it, you know, NASA continues to do what it is they do which is explore yeah. and it's great to be involved with it a little bit great well yeah that's a, it's amazing stuff well rich i there are you know a, a million things i could probably talk to you about so but i'm <laughs> we'll, we'll pick and choose here but i'd like i really would like to start talking about windows 8 i mean here at raxco we're always excited by and interested in the big new microsoft releases where we have early access to them as well and and we're kind of down to the depths in the file system so there's some things we really need to be careful of, and so that's why we work closely with Microsoft. But um, beyond that, I know you have your hands on the consumer preview, and there's been a lot of written about it by you and others. And so, uh, overall, what's your take? Is it is it a great thing? Is it is it good? Is it average? Is Microsoft going to hit a home run with this? What's your take? Um, well, my take is, you know, it's, we we know Windows is going to be successful. It, it, the 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 breadth that Microsoft has in the enterprise, every new PC that is sold comes with Windows on it. So at some point, the new PCs are no longer going to have Windows 7 on it. They're going to have Windows 8. So Windows 8 is going to get out there. I mean, they just recently announced a few weeks ago um, seven or 600 million licenses sold of Windows 7 since it came out in October of 2009, less than three years. So by far the most popular Windows operating system and very successful and a very good OS too. It really is a solid OS. What's great is that we know Windows is going to get out there and it's going to saturate. It's going to get in the market. It's going to get bought on new PCs. When the consumer goes, it's, it's why Windows, it's why Microsoft is offering that special deal right now, 15 bucks. If you buy a PC with Windows 7 between now and January for $15, you get the Windows 8 upgrade. They don't want people to stop buying PCs. And so it's going to get out there, and it's a unique system. If anyone, if anyone's been using it since the developer preview, and then in February we got the consumer preview, and then back at the end of May we got the release preview, which is the last public view we're going to get of the OS before it finishes up and, and gets finalized. It, it is a, certainly a transitional system. It's also a system that's drawn a lot of criticism on both sides, uh, both to the negative and the positive. And to me, it's a transitional system. We, with the advent of what I label as just simple everyday computing, you know, when somebody can go get an iPad, their smartphone, and easily interact with it either through selecting an app in the store and it's a one button tap, one button tap to start that app. Windows 8's bringing that same mindset. It's gonna have a new store that debuted during the consumer preview where you're gonna be able to access applications, both free and paid, and you'll, it'll be easy to install. You'll search for keywords, you'll find the app you're looking for, you'll pay for it, or you'll download it for free, and it will be installed on your system. And Windows 8 is kind of melding what we know as the Windows desktop, like we know in Windows 7, and it's melding the touch world with the new Metro interface that is touch-based. And that is why, for me, it's very transitional. I, we're gonna see a little bit of everything in this one. Um, I think it's gonna be successful in the point that it's gonna get out there, it's gonna be bought, there's no doubt about that. I mean. You know, Windows XP continues to be one of the most popular operating systems out there, that, and it's 10 years old, and people are still running it. Uh, and in 2014, the support for that's going away. So, you know, it's going to get any security updates. So people are going to have to make the move. Now, 
Are you familiar with this mindset about Windows about every other release, Joe? Oh yes. <laughs> Summer, every other one's great, and other yeah, every other one. Everybody says every other release is good and bad. Right. So if you go backwards and we say, uh, uh, let's start with Windows Seven, a great release, very popular, well received. Vista, not so much. Right. Although it sold well, it did not sell nearly as well as Windows Seven did when it came on the scene. And got bashed. And prior to Vista, we had um, what's that? I would say, and Vista got bashed certainly by the by the media. Oh, yeah. Vista, and Vista was a tough Vista was a tough OS. It was demanding when it came to system specs. A, a lot of systems that were already out there could not easily run Windows Vista, and it had a share of issues. And of course, before Windows Vista, we had Windows XP. So, and then we we won't even go back to Windows Millennium and Windows 98. And you know, obviously, Windows 95 was a very groundbreaking OS because we we moved away from you know the windows 3.11 concept of things and started with the, it had the start button and windows 95 was a dramatic change in windows and i remember that change and i remember the 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 complaints that were out there about how dramatic that change was and how oh my gosh we shouldn't be doing this and what is the start button thing and and why are they making such drastic changes and then windows 95 was immensely popular right. well now here we are at Windows 8. Now the complaints have reversed. Everybody's complaining because the start button has been removed <laughs> as opposed to when you know everybody was complaining that it was coming. And, but Microsoft is making very sound and reasonable decisions about this transition with this OS because they've even changed the way they beta test their OSs. If you go back to Vista, beta tests were closed. Uh, you had to apply. If you got selected, then you... Uh, you got the beta OS and you tested and you, you logged onto a site and you reported bugs. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, telemetry getting back to Microsoft about how the systems are being used, crashes and things of that nature. With Windows 7, they make a significant change in how they beta test OSs and I'm convinced this is why Windows 7 was so good. They, they, anyone who ran that system, and if you remember, Windows 7 was the first time that an OS was offered on public beta uh, widespread. Oh yeah, Everybody right. Everybody could download it, and a lot of people did. I forget the number, or six million people, or something like that. Seven, seven million people used the beta OS over the course of that time before it released. Right. They had so much data. They knew how people used the system. They were required to report that. It was part of the the kind of deal for getting early access to the OS was that you had to participate in that feedback system. Of course, you could. Uh, provide feedback and things of that nature. There was still that, but they were collecting so much information off the telemetry, they knew what was working and what wasn't working. So hopefully that, that change will... Windows 7 was such a solid open. Yeah, and hopefully that change will, that change in how they do things will help them beat the uh, every other release syndrome. I agree. And Windows 8, as you, if, you're, if you read the build-in Windows 8 blog at MSDN, um, I mean, those are some mammoth blog post, 3,000, 4,000 words, and very technical, but if you read, but they talk about how they're using data, that they're getting through the different stages of development from the people in the world who are using it, and I think Windows 8 in the first 24 hours had a million downloads, so there's a lot of people installing it and using it. They, they knew the start button wasn't being used, and people were using the taskbar more, they were putting shortcuts on the desktop more, so they saw a reasonable ability to get rid of the start button. And why not? Because Windows 8 is such a, a transitional system. It's such a change from what we've known for the last, what, uh, since 95. So that's been 16, 17 years. It, why not make this change now? It, it's it, it's kind of like if we're going to make this move, let's make it now. We're coming off a great base off of Windows 7, and we're, we want to get into this touch world. They want to see more tablets. And th think about it. You know, iPads are great. They, they are very much in, uh, a solid Anybody can go buy it and use it pretty much out of the box. It, it's very, very much a visual thing, and it's easy to access the programs you want to install. And it, you don't have to go searching on a website for a program. You can just go to the store, find what you're looking for, get it, and it's installed. You don't have to dig down in the you know the nuts and bolts of the OS. Right. Well, think about the flexibility you're going to get on a tablet that's running Windows 8 that has a full desktop capability to it, as well as that Metro interface. And I, I'm finding it... For me, the best setup I is the combination of a keyboard, a mouse, and a touchscreen running the OS because it, it allows me to do my keyboarding and mousing, but also to reach up and touch the screen. In fact, I find myself trying to touch screen on my netbook, you know, or my desktop that's running Windows 8 now, out of habit. So I think it's going to be a very transition.
educational system. I think it's a great move, and why not be bold in this and, and do the big changes? I mean, even the big one that's coming with RTM is they announced uh, the removal of uh, what we know as the Aero interface, that nice kind of smooth and glossy see-through through interface is coming away, going to become more metro style uh, interface on the desktop side as well. So it, it's going to be something else, Joe. I, I really do think it's an OS that, although it's getting banged about, I think more and more, I, I tell you what I noticed at Microsoft Tech Ed. I attended that conference a couple weeks ago, and that's a developer <coughs> IT pro conference. So I, about 70% IT pro, about 30% developers. And a lot of those guys just haven't touched the OS, haven't seen it used, haven't experienced the Metro interface. And so I saw through Twitter and a lot of other social media that people were going into sessions and wary of Metro, not sure about Metro, but as they used it, saw it or experienced it, they're coming out and they're going, wow, you know what? That Metro stuff is not so bad. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot of preconceived notions about Metro and how it is or isn't gonna work. But I think as more people use this OS, they are going to find it to be very functional. Um, I, I know for me, I'm looking forward to seeing RTM because and when they open up the uh, Windows Store and we see more and more stuff develop for it because in the release preview, there's been some apps released that have just taken it to a whole nother level for like Twitter access, uh, both Rowy and uh, Tweetro, uh, both released Twitter apps, the first two Twitter, solid solo, only for Twitter apps for the uh, release preview. And they're terrific. There's a lot of detail, there's a lot of ability in it. And I think as more and more developers come on board with it, we're going to see that type of uh, software on the Metro side that's going to make it an extremely functional OS and flexible because you have the ability to still use desktop <coughs> software if that's what you need to use. Right, I agree. And I, well, I think it's certainly true too that you know, people are hesitant or resistant or and some, some flat out don't like change. But typically, whether whatever application it is, sometimes big changes and bold changes need to be made. And once they are, people get over there hesitation and get over their fear and their um, just <laughs> right. inability to deal with it, then they, then they settle in, they say, oh, this is pretty good. Yep, I agree. Yeah, good. Well, um, what, what are, are there, is there anything, Rich, as you've looked at um, Windows 8, um, you know, sounds, sounds great, and I agree, we looked at it here as well. Is there anything that you don't like right now? Is, 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 is there something that bothers you about it or something you wish they hadn't, uh, Microsoft hadn't done? Um. You know, I'm not sure. Um, I do tend to be a bit biased. I, I admit that. I, I will never hesitate to say I'm not a fan sure. because I am. So I do look with rose-colored glasses at times. Um, but all in all, I'm not finding a lot to complain about. Right. Um, you know, some of the applications, and, and, and I'm not willing to come out and criticize. They're previews. They're, they're, they're in development. They are, they're, they're trying out different things to see what works. I think when we see the final version of Windows 8 this fall, that those app previews that have been built in to Windows 8 now with the release preview, like the sports, the news, the finance, and the travel apps, the email application, the calendaring, and all that, the kind of built-in infrastructure into Windows 8, I, I think those are going to further, because one thing I have noticed in all my involvement with Windows over the years and, and being on Windows betas, they always save the best for release. It, you are not, we are not seeing 100% of what's gonna be in Windows 8. And I think, and they've never failed to surprise people with how well developed the different things are, with the different programs or the OS itself or how the OS looks, runs, and operates. And of course, right now we're all running, you know, release preview or consumer preview, and it's full of code that's doing other stuff in there, watching things and tracking. And so it causes a little bit of, you know, it might cause issues on different systems because of the testing code that's in there. So, you know, I, I'm excited to see what's coming. Now, right now at this moment, because I am forgiving of app previews and things of that nature, um, I know they're listening because I've written several blog posts about the Windows Store and some ideas about that. And between the consumer preview and the release preview, they made a significant change in the Windows Store to make it easier to find your apps. Um, and right. I think the other thing that's really going to surprise people is how it syncs, how Windows 8 on a, I have a tablet and I have it running on my desktop and how well they sync settings between each other, whether it be your per 
personalization settings or your, your account picture or your login uh, screen picture and stuff like that, there's going to be a lot of those little things. And there's been so much attention to detail patent with this version of the OS um, to, to help with that experience. I, I just I find it hard to find something heavy duty to criticize. Right. I, I really do because I've been using the OS now on a tablet since December with the developer preview. And I've gone fully, I'm running it full time since the end of May on my desktop in a non-touch desktop. I'm running Windows 8 and I easily move between the Metro side and the desktop side with the mouse. Now I did get myself a Microsoft Touch mouse, which has got some, uh, you can do some two finger, one finger, three finger kind of work there. They are developing a touch mouse that's going to be uh, for Windows 8 that's going to give you the ability to do things like swipe side to side so you can move around in the Metro interface. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so they're given, you know, they're even looking to add the ability to a non-touch desktop with the use of a touch mouse to give you some access to the ability to move around and work in uh, Windows 8, both on the Metro and the desktop side. And I think that's the other thing is just like I talked about the devs and the IT pros at Microsoft TechEd having a change of uh, view of it by seeing it. I think that's the other big thing. People have to experience it. And I don't think you can load it, look at it for two minutes and decide, oh, this isn't for me. You have to dive into it, use it, and, and see what it's all about. Really learn them. There is a learning curve. There's there's new hot corners on the desktop and in the uh, Metro interface to help you navigate things with the sort of mouse. You know, it's a whole new environment for us Windows users. Those who are on an iPad, probably will find the Metro interface very easy to use because it's based on a lot of the same motions. Right. Well, I agree, and, and certainly as a... As a software vendor, I think we we know. Th I'm sorry, I lost you there. But yeah, I, certainly as a software vendor, we know that uh, the the pre preliminary versions are not necessarily the final thing. But I, I agree with you. I think we're we're all excited for that um, for the for the new win new release. Um, I think Rich, I was going to ask you a question about buying a new PC. If any of our listeners are in the market or thinking about a new PC, do you wait for Windows 8? But maybe that's not an issue if for 15 bucks as you said earlier maybe just go ahead if you really need one or really want one right now is that true yeah you know the reason microsoft is offering that 15 dollar upgrade is they don't want people not to go out and buy computers one of the lessons microsoft learned a couple cycles ago with windows vista and such a high spec requirement for vista which was they got hit on a lot about they got knocked about it and with windows 7 they didn't upgrade the spec requirements they just simply said this will run as good or better than Vista did on the same hardware, well, Windows 8 is going to be the same thing. Windows 8 will run as good or better as Windows 7 does on the same hardware. So the reason they offer that $15 deal is you can go out and you can buy a PC now. You don't have to wait until Windows 8 comes out. And then it's very easy to get that $15 upgrade and then later upgrade your Windows 7 computer to Windows 8, which will run it extremely well. So I would say don't not go shopping if you're in the market for a PC. Uh, I people ask me all the time what PC should I get and I always tell them you know buy within your budget buy the best specs the best deal that you can buy that's within your budget um, and then like I said Windows Windows 8 has the same spec requirements as Windows 7 so it will run well on that system I know I'm finding that with my own great well we, we here of course always say that you can always squeeze a little bit more out of your PC by optimizing your and defragmenting your PC so good words uh, rich Moving on, um, there's been a lot of excitement uh, about the new Surface tablet, and I think you were early in on that. So, want, can you talk a little bit about that and what your impressions so far? Yeah, I, you know, I think the tech world was quite, quite taken off guard by this announcement because nobody had a clue. And, you know, there was rumors and suspicions and all kinds of stuff flying around before Monday afternoon when Microsoft made this announcement out in Los Angeles, but. I don't think anybody knew for sure what exactly it was. I think people thought it would be a tablet, but I don't think anybody had an idea that Microsoft was building it themselves, a la kind of like Apple does with the iPad. And so that for me was amazing because I, you know, I work with a lot of people on the Windows team, and I one of my contacts told me a week later because they were away on vacation, they even on the Windows team, on the Windows 8 team, didn't know that this was coming. So Microsoft really knocked it out of the park when it comes to keeping that inside of the, you know, the four walls where they were working on that tablet and uh, surprising a lot of people with this. Um, now, Surface is going to come out in two versions. There's going to be a, an RT version, which is ARM-based. That's, you know, system on chip, much uh, uh, cooler chip operation, 
uh, not like a PC where it has to have a lot of heat cool down or stuff like that. Right. So you're going to have that version, and according to Microsoft, that will come out around the same time that Windows 8 is released to the public. And then about three months later, they will release a what they're calling a Windows 8 Pro version, which is a tablet, which is basically a PC in tablet form um, that will run all your desktop apps as well as apps off of Metro. Now the RT tablet, the ARM-based uh, Windows 8 tablet, <coughs> will not run normal desktop x86 apps. It's going to have to run apps that are uh, specifically compiled for the ARM system. Uh, the, all the apps you'll get in the Windows Store will be compatible with that. And you'll still have the desktop, but not all of your programs that you have today or use today will be compatible with that. So developers will have to develop them for the ARM system. Um, the other big innovation that came with this announcement with this was this keyboard cover that they announced with the, what they're calling a touch cover. And it's, uh, it's, it's for protecting the screen, but it's also, when you set it down, it's a magnetic connection on the bottom of it, and you set it down, and the one version is touch sensitive, so as you type, it feels the pressure from your fingers, although the keys don't depress, and it types like a regular keyboard. And then they have the other one, which is, it has some movement on the keys, but it, yet it still acts as a, a protection to your screen. And when you flip it back, it's got an accelerometer in it, which knows it's not in proper typing position and it in turn doesn't give you random keystrokes. Um, pretty amazing. I mean, there was a video from one of uh, GeekWire that Todd Bishop put up online, and I thought it was, the, I just mentioned in my own podcast this past week, it's one of the best videos I've seen to show you how that keyboard attaches, how secure it is, and how solid it is. And I think that is a, a major innovation. I mean, they created that touch cover specifically for the Microsoft Surface, and that's going to be available tablet itself is built out of a special uh, vapor mag uh, kind of uh, material for the case and everything and it's going to have its own kickstand which will let you set the tablet up at 22 degrees a good viewing angle with the keyboard attached you'll be able to, to function it's even got a touchpad integrated into that that touch cover so it's a pretty impressive system uh, you know there's a, still a lot up in the air uh, one of the big hits they took this week with this announcement was that they didn't reveal a lot about the specs about the price, they gave some estimations, you know, but there's nothing solid about that yet. And of course, it's still an, a tablet that's in development. As you might have seen during Stephen Sanofsky's demonstration of it, it, one of them locked up on him, so he had to go grab another one. Of course, you know the tech press; they grab a hold of stories like that and just publish it up. And but I, I think Microsoft really nailed it with this idea of building their own tablet. And and I gotta say, you know, Microsoft has a unique relationship with manufacturers to build computers and build PCs and build tablets for the Windows operating system, and they have for years. And in fact, it's a huge linchpin of Microsoft's strategy of how they get their OS out there. Them deciding to build their own tablet, their own PC, is a first. They've never done that before. They build a lot of hardware. They've been in the hardware business for 30 years, building mice and keyboards and, and cameras and webcams and steering wheels and things of that nature but never had they built their own computer. So that's a big move for them. That's because you know, OEMs have had a lot of opportunity to build some pretty fabulous hardware, but they've never quite come through. And it's kind of a conflicting thing because the OEMs are trying to, to have their profit margin be as best as it can be. And unfortunately, it results in some very mediocre quality PCs and laptops and devices out there on the market. Um, it's one of the things that Apple gets a lot of praise for is the quality of their hardware and because they control it, they, they influence it, and Microsoft is gonna do the same thing with Surface. So I, I think Surface is going to be a huge hit. I, there's gonna be some tendency, uh, people are gonna be a little bit unsure, people are gonna to wanna to put their hands on it, and right now that's gonna be limited. Microsoft stores are gonna be the only brick and mortar stores where you can go touch one of these tablets when they come out, uh, and they will be available online apparently, but, and right now there's not that many Microsoft stores. So if I think there's any hindrance, I think that's part of it because a lot of people like to touch and feel a try before they buy. Right. Well, I agree, and I, I'm. I think there's a. Lot, I agree with you. There's a ton of excitement about Surface, and really interested, and we're excited to follow what transpires with that. So I think it's going to be. Um, I, I believe I agree. It's going to be a big hit, and certainly regarding the um, the event and all, I think Microsoft. Uh, usually has has different standards or from the 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 technology world and the public as how you know they're they're um, how they're perceived and any missteps or whatever they might make they get they get hammered a little bit more <laughs> sometimes unfairly I think but um yeah I, I agree it's going to be it sure does yeah well Rich I, I know you're a busy guy I will um, let you go um, I want to really thank you very much for your time today I really appreciate it. 
Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It's great to talk technology. And, uh, you know, we're in a time of, of extreme change. And like you said earlier, change is not the most comfortable thing in the world. But I tell you what, it is the most constant thing in the world. Everything's changing. You got to be flexible. Um, you know, I, I think Microsoft has really turned around with Surface and Windows 8, and they are really betting uh, that they're having to make this move because the future is going to be computing where it's going to be more voice and touch based interfaces. And, and at some point, Microsoft had to move away from the desktop, they had to move into this environment. I, I think with their Windows Phone, uh, that's what this fall will be two years now, Windows Phone has been out. I think they've seen with the popularity of it and how well the Metro interfaces work and how well the, the App Store aspect of things has worked, I think is part of the reason why it got introduced into Windows 8 as the Windows Store. I, I, I wouldn't say they're betting the farm. A lot of people think they're betting the farm. Look, Microsoft's not going to go out of business because of Windows 8 and Windows Surface or Microsoft Surface. They are still going to have enterprise customers have a terrific market with their Exchange Server, SharePoint, and all those enterprise type software programs. But, you know, Microsoft has always been an enterprise based company. Their focus on consumers is, is almost been secondary in a sense. And these changes with Windows 8 and with Surface are really driving towards consumers. So I, I think it's a significant mindset change for Microsoft, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes this fall as the release comes. I, I, I couldn't agree more, and we'll um, <clears throat> we'll uh, we can keep in touch, and certainly people can follow you to get the latest and greatest on what's going on in that whole area in your opinions. So again, Rich, thanks very much for your time. Uh, everyone, my guest today has been Richard Hay, Microsoft MVP and owner of WindowsObserver.com, a great website for getting all this type of information and a lot more of it, and also the Observed Tech Podcast. You can follow Rich also along with thousands of others at WinObs on Twitter. That's W-I-N-O-B-S. That's on Twitter. I'm Joe Abbasamra, and I can be found on Twitter at PerfectDisc and also at the TheRackscoBlog.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye for now.